real business owners. How do, how do we intro? <laughs> I forgot. What's up, real I'm, business uh, owners? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to 2020. <laughs> it's kind of like... It's our first podcast of the year, you know. What yeah, I mean, I mean it feels like my first we had that podcast. first episode drop with the partners, but this is our first episode that we're filming yeah. in 2020. So, what is it? Episode you know, 32. It's a new decade. 32. Episode 32. Yeah, dude, that's gone by quick. Yeah, it's gone by quick. Um, okay, in today's episode, guys, we want to you know go over um, creating content and, and why creating content, uh, dude. I think I've so I, I've seen some things on Facebook about. People talking about like a Gary V content creation challenge or something like that. Mm, it's just, I, I just, I, I don't know what it is. Yeah. So I've seen some people like, oh, post 5,000 pieces of content a day, like trying to make fun of it or whatever. But right, right, right. I mean, it's valid information that he's, that he's giving people in terms of creating content. Right. Mm-hmm. And so guys, we wanted to, uh, you know, talk about, you know, the content that we've created for you guys that, that you're benefiting from. Um, and how we benefit from creating content, how our businesses benefit from creating content, um, and how we got started yeah. creating content. Um, go into that story a little bit, Kel, because that was, uh, we, we were <laughs> trying to email, I think at first, yeah. right? They, Dude, uh, that's the thing, man. Like when I, when I see opportunities, I just go for them. Yeah. Right. So like when I saw Gary V put out a little, uh, a couple years ago, a little ad about, hey, we've got this, uh, you know, we got this marketing opportunity where you could use some of our athletes through yeah. Vayner Sports, you know, email if you're interested or whatever. Yeah. And so I emailed him a couple of times and, and I came in and told you about it. I was yeah. like, dude, I keep emailing because I'm, I'm interested in how we could do some marketing with Gary Vee. I mean, he's he's pretty relevant online, yeah, right? Of so, of course, we, we, we watch him. We see what he's doing. Um, it's just kind of ironic because, you know, Trev's like, dude, we'll keep emailing him. So keep emailing, emailing them, and dude, after the third email, yeah. so just talking to you and then email one more time. Their I think team. we were sitting in the same room when you sent that third email. Yeah, and then we were sitting there talking about something, yeah. and you look down at your phone, and you're like, "Holy shit, they emailed back!" Yeah, you yeah. know, or something like that. Yeah, and the dude did tell me he's like, "Dude, we literally once we, when we launched that, we've had like thirty thousand emails come in of people interested in this marketing venture, mm. this lower tier marketing adventure venture, which is like a ten thousand yeah. dollar a month marketing venture yeah. versus a hundred or two hundred thousand dollar a month yeah. marketing venture." And so, um, which was kind of where we were at at that time. Like, dude, you know, that was kind of our marketing yeah. budget. And so, yeah. um, so it was really cool, man. And what was really cool about getting to work with those guys is we were really close to AJ, which is Gary V's brother. Yeah. Um, he introduced us to Liz, which we ended up starting doing some of our accounting, which is their sister. We met their mom. We pretty much met the whole family except, except their for dad, the dad that owns the, yeah, the exactly. wine store. Uh, but they really are such the coolest people. But, yeah. but back to the, the story on that. Um, I, I came to you guys after working with AJ and them for a few months and then doing the deal with their athletes and all that stuff. And, And I was like, man, I just have a feeling that we should go to his conference and and hook up with these guys a little bit more, you know, and and it was his agent 21, 2021 conference um, where they're they're kind of targeting real estate agents, investors, insurance people. They had those uh, those four main categories that they They were they were targeting. And so I was like, yeah, they're all business owners. Maybe there'll be some opportunity for clients there. I had no idea, but I just had a feeling that we needed to be there. And so it was cool, man, because we it led to a few different opportunities. One, we chopped it up with Andy a little bit about being a part of our, you know, what, what entrepreneur course they were launching it was before yeah. RT was even announced. Yeah, so true. we already knew about it and talked about it a little bit yeah. with, with Andy and what he had in mind um, before he launched it. And so we, and we were still curious even after we talked to him, he didn't give that much information, yeah. but just getting time with those guys. But then uh, meeting Gary and, and his family and stuff. And, but the big takeaway we had from agent 2021 was like, where where everything is going for content and when you and i talked after the event jeremy he wasn't really on on board about <laughs> he just didn't fo- see the big picture but yeah when uh when when we talked afterwards and and we in- interviewed our first content you know videographer it was like if to us it was a no-brainer man it was like do we know where the where we know where it's going you mm-hmm. know we know where content's going we see the trend like having a videographer and putting content out and a podcast out is like still very small compared to where it's going to go. Yeah. And so for us, I feel like it was like uncomfortable. Very much so. And we're like, we don't know what we're doing. Yep. But nobody does when they get started. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, 
that's one of the reasons why Just I wanted to going. do the podcast too yeah. about this situation, yeah. right, of creating content because after we started doing it, there's been many times that I've thought like, what if we would have done this two years prior to us pulling the trigger on oh, it? Yeah. Where would we be now? Yeah. Right. And so hindsight's obviously 2020, yeah. but you can never have 2020 hindsight if you never do anything. Yeah, exactly. Right. And so I so, think a lot of people are like, oh, it's too many people are already doing that. So they, yeah. they don't do it. And it's I probably, was guilty of that. Yeah. I, I kind of had some of those same thoughts. Like, I can't compete with those guys, but who are you comparing yourself to? Exactly. Those guys are the guys that are at the top. Yeah. It's an excuse. It's an excuse to not do it. Like, dude, it's already like. I'm not going to be able to compete with so-and-so in the business category podcast or videography yeah. or whatever. And it's, it's an excuse for you to stay mediocre, right? Because it's scary to fail. It's scary to get uncomfortable. Uh, but you're but, never going to know until you do it. But you know? <laughs> in most cases, people compare themselves to who they listen to. So yeah. if they're listening to Gary Vee or Andy Frisella or Ed Milet or whoever, mm -hmm. you're, you're comparing yourself to the top guys in the game. Yeah. Right? And so you think that you can't compete against them. Well, you may not be able to, yeah. but that doesn't mean that you can't benefit right. from creating content with your business. Are you trying to compete against them and be bi you know, worth billions and billions of dollars? That may not be your goal. Right. So why are you comparing yourself to that, mm -hmm. right? There's plenty of guys that are, you know, uh, that have the 500th best podcast or, you know, Instagram account that's probably still making millions of dollars every single year. Yeah. You just don't know about them because you don't follow them, right? You follow the top people. Yeah. And there's still, there's plenty of people that have 50,000 followers or 100,000 followers that are still making good money creating content and then they create their own programs or whatever it is you know outside of that to continue to monetize and be able to make more money but i think um, uh well i think that well, first of all i didn't even listen to podcasts I like know. probably i still get people dming a like, year ago sorry i don't know i've never listened to a podcast one guy actually uh There's, screenshot uh, uh the thing he said first podcast i've ever listened to which was ours today mm -hmm. yeah and i shared it um, so that people could see that. But, and he says, now I'm addicted. Yeah. Dude, that's how I so, was. Like my first podcast I think I ever listened to was Andy's. It wasn't that long ago. Yeah. And then I was like, dude, I'm gonna go, I, I like what this guy's all about. And I'm gonna go listen to a bunch of his past ones. Right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I can't stress enough, man. I mean, if you're genuinely putting that content out there, you really want it to help people. It really yep. is. You're, you're really putting stuff out there that's helped you get to where you're at. There's a lot of people that would like to be where you're at. Right. Like if you're thinking about starting a podcast and you've got a business, whether it's doing half a million a year or half a billion a year, like, trust me, there's people just getting started that would love to be where you're at. So if you can genuinely share, you know, some things, it's not only going to help you grow, it's going to help them grow. Like well, you're going to win. Like, I feel like that's kind of the big secret sauce in like putting content out there is like, are you genuinely doing it to like help other people? Yeah. Not just you. And are you really sharing things that have helped you win, not just little tidbits and then kind of... I, I think that's the problem with, with content is people believe that content means creating, uh, you know, videos that will turn to a customer immediately, yeah. right? Like, just they're, 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 yeah, they're, 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 they're confusing it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, don't, don't get us wrong, okay? We create real content that we believe will benefit you guys, the, the listeners of Real Business Owners Podcast. But in return, we have got business from real business owners to our accounting firm. We do bookkeeping for, for clients that follow us and listen to this podcast. We right. did the, the, the one podcast, I think it was episode 23 or 24, about saving money, tax strategies and stuff like that. We had a handful of people come through and do tax plans. One lady um, that's a doctor, um, her brother listened to the podcast and did an intro and said, hey, here's my sister's phone number. You need to call her. I talked to her for you know an hour or so. We did a tax plan with her. Um, Sean showed her how to save $40,000 yeah. oh, with, we hear that with, stuff all the time, with a, yeah. with a $1,000 <laughs> tax plan, yeah. right? Yeah. But she's a high income earner. So sure, yeah. I guess the point that I'm trying to make here is you can be genuine and give good information and want to make money at the same time. Yeah. I think people think that because they want to make money, that, that it's disingenuous, yeah. 
right? That they can't be genuine about something because they have an agenda behind it. Yeah. Let's be real. Guys, we want to get our Real Business Owners podcast to grow. We want the Instagram account to grow. We want to be top. We want to be we, top podcast. We want, we want to, to grow. We as want to grow yeah. because we know if we grow and we continue to give good information, it'll grow by itself and organically. And by default, our businesses will benefit from it. Yeah. So, are we bad people because we're trying to help others and know that if we put out enough good information and we help enough people help themselves, that it'll come full circle? that the universe will also take care of us. Yeah. You know, we want you guys to vibe with us. We want to work with with anybody that we possibly can work with that likes the information that we put out. Yeah. Those are some of our better client clients and customers because, you know, I mean, I I walked in this morning and uh Trevor was on the phone with 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 a guy named Mike. Um that came from real business owners. He's a good ass dude. Yeah, there's um, so many good people. And our, and, uh, and and so DMs. I hop on the phone call for yeah. two or three minutes. Just say what up to him real quick. We chop it up. Um, he has his own podcast. I think it's a uh, Big Studs um, something. I'll, I'll have to look that up and, and circle back on that. But the idea is, I want to work with cool people just like you guys want to yeah, work with cool people with inside of your guys' ours, business. Yeah. You know, so the idea of, of creating genuine content, give information that benefits other people. Yeah. Don't come at it with the perspective of, okay, what can I possibly say? to have the customer work with me, work with me. If that's all you're thinking about the entire time, yeah. it won't be genuine. Right. Right? Like I, I think out of 32 episodes, we we asked one time, uh, we didn't even ask. We said, hey, we discounted it. We cut it in half and try to help people and ask for their business, mm -hmm. so to speak. Right? Um, so we're, we don't feel like that we're overly asking, but by default, we're still getting business. Yeah. And so, guys, creating content, you have to think about the people that are going to be listening to the content or seeing the content and, and give them information that's valuable to them. Yeah. Right? And so... What I mean by that is, that, let's say, for instance, there's a landscaper or a car detailer, right? And all they're doing is taking pictures of, of the lines in the grass and how pretty the grass looks. Right. How does that benefit me? Right. It doesn't. Now, if that same individual made videos about how to make your grass look this green... I'm going to watch it because yeah. to be honest with you, I like, I, I want my grass yeah, to be green. You want a sharp looking yard. You know, I want yeah. a good look. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's going to attract people yeah. to follow that content. If he's saying, this is the type of manure you should use. Mm -hmm. This is what you should do in the uh, springtime. This is what you should do in the fall. This is what you should do in the winter. Here's some, here's how you change a sprinkler. Giving information yeah. away that benefits other people will by default ultimately benefit you. But too many people think, dude, if I give away all my secrets, they, they're just going to do it themselves. Trust me, they won't. Mm -mm. You know, Even if they do want to learn that stuff yeah. um, or do some of that on their own, if they're, if they're busy people, typically they're going to get to a point where they're like, dude, I'd rather just hire the guy that taught me how to do this to do it for me, right? It's like I can go change the oil on my car by yeah. myself yeah. right now. I yeah. know how, but... I'd rather just take it to oil Somebody can Henry's else. and get yeah. it done, dude. You <laughs> exactly. Know? Like, uh, and pay, you know, 50 bucks more or whatever. It's, it is what it is. But like, but that person is also going to be like, oh, you know what? You should hire so-and-so to do your yard because he showed some really cool stuff on his, dude, on his page. He knows what the hell he's talking about. Yeah, look about, how good these yards should, look. It, yeah. it turns into a, you know, yeah. snowball effect. Exactly. If you're a real effect. estate agent and all you're doing is taking pictures of houses, yeah. like I can go to Zillow and, and, and look at houses. Yeah. Like I don't need to follow somebody else's page just to see house after house after house. Yeah. But tell me what are some things that you've seen that can increase the value of my home. Yeah. Hey, just so that you know, the centerpiece of your house is the kitchen. Now, by simply spending $10,000 before you sell your house by redoing the kitchen and living room area, yeah. it can increase the cost of your home by $30,000. Here's the, Here's the return. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or curb appeal. Like, give information that benefits other people besides you. Mm -hmm. Don't just show your $1.2 million listing. Yeah. And, and hope that, you know, one of your 500 followers buys it yeah. because it's probably not the case. And you're always going to have 500 followers if all you're doing is posting content that benefits you. Because yeah. if you're just posting the listing, you're hoping somebody sees it and buys the house. Right. So how is that benefiting anybody else but you? 
Totally. Right? Yeah. And so the idea of creating content, guys, is to think about other people. Well, and it doesn't happen overnight either. You can't be like, well, I've been trying to give and it's just not happening. Like, you got to be it consistent doesn't. with it, man. It like, doesn't. when we went into our podcast, and well, first of all, we did our our videos on Instagram for a while before we actually launched the podcast, yeah. you know? And so, um, but when we went into this venture, we were like committed to doing it for years. We weren't yeah. committed to just doing it for three months to see yeah. if the marketing test is worth it or yeah. whatever. You know, we, we, we wanted to go into it for years, um, with no expectation. Yeah. yeah. And we, and so far it's been pretty awesome, man. You know, it's, it's actually exceeded which is very rare in business or anything that you do. Yeah. You know, in, in, in a lot of cases, we talk about, you know, plan for the unplanned. Shit's not going to happen how you think it is. It's going to yeah. take a long time for, you know, good things to unfold and good things to happen for you and your business. And it's the same thing with anything. It's going to take time to get in shape. It's going to take time to get an audience when you yeah. create content. It's going to take time. But, you know, to, to, to go back where uh, where we v went to Agent 2021, I don't mean to circle back too much, but um, <laughs> I wanted to hit on this real quick. I forgot about it. Um, when we start talking, dude, we can just keep talking. Oh, totally. For, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just wanted people yeah. to know, though, like, yeah. it, it, it it's a it's a dedication. Like it is. there's times it's inconvenient mm -hmm. for us to be like, dude, we got to get a podcast in, but it's important for us to make yeah. sure it drops every Wednesday, exactly, because you know people expect that, yeah. and we want to live up to those expectations. Mm -hmm. And so you got to go into it with that mindset of like, dude, I'm gonna do this consistent every week. I'm gonna make the time. It's just like like you said, the gym. Like you, even when the inconvenient times, you gotta find you gotta a way go. to get it done. Yeah, you gotta so. you, if, if if you're serious about it. Yeah, if you're not that serious about you, you you'll buy that quick excuse that your brain's trying to sell you. Yeah, right. Totally. Um, so we went to Asian 2021, and when when Gary Vee was on stage, he was talking a little bit, and he goes, "Look, if you make halfway decent money, pill off a couple grand a month and start creating content, or hire a videographer." Mm -hmm. Right. And so we you know we kind of looked at each other a little bit at the event. We're like, yeah, that, that you know maybe we should do that and. As Kel said, we talked more and more about it, and we finally said, you know, let's 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 try it, let's do it, mm -hmm. you know, let's commit to it and just see what happens, yeah. you know. Um, and you guys need to understand this: all it really is, like, there's no, there's not a whole lot of new paths that are that are out there. The, a lot of the paths have already been paved, right? Like, look at the people that do have videographers; they're in a great situation on social media, right? They can create endless amount of content for their business, right? Uh, prior to us having a videographer, we would spend a thousand bucks a video or whatever it was, right? Yeah. And we didn't have a whole lot of say in the editing process, and we don't have to do we that to anymore wait. because yeah. Austin's he kicks ass. But um, at the end of the day, guys, we talked about it. Um, it was really weird how it happened because the original uh, videographer that came in came in for a sales job. Yeah. And I was interviewing for a sales job, and he says he's going to college. And so I was making fun of him a little bit. And so what the hell are you going to college for, bro? You know, um, which which I do. Uh, because they're coming to me for a job, but yet they're saying they're in college or have gone to college, which shows, first off, you didn't need to go to college to come work in the sales position that we were hiring for right. at that time. Like, So I was trying to figure out you sure. know, what, what his idea of college was. and you know, to see if it would be valuable. And he says, well, I'm going to, I, I, I graduate here in like three months. Uh, I've been going to, what do they call it? Austin videography school or what the hell do you call that? <laughs> what, what, what's, what's the, what's the class name that you went to? It's like a college of the arts. College of yeah. the arts. Yeah. So it's film. It's yeah. more so film. Okay. So he was doing, you know, uh, yeah, no, a film class. Of film. Bachelors, Bachelors of film. film. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is what it was. And I actually sat back in my seat and was like, holy shit. You know, we were just at this event like two or three weeks ago. We put it out there and had talked about how we wanted a videographer. And yeah. this kid is sitting in my office for a sales job when we could pay him to be a videographer. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I call Kel. I'm like, dude, you're not going to believe this. This kid's <laughs> sitting in my office. He wants a sales job, but he's a videographer. And Kel's like, hire him. Yeah. I was I'm like, like I it. did, dude. dude. I'm like, it. yeah, he's going to yeah. start in like a week or two or something. And so we just did it. And, and, we Jeremy was like, yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah, well, I was like, no, he goes, that. Let's no, do it. he goes, full time. Remember that? <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. like, yeah, like, <laughs> what? what are you gonna hire him five uh, hours a week? Um, and so, 
not everyone's going to see the vision. I guess that's a, that's yeah. a good point right there. Like if you guys have business partners, family members, or whatever, and you're taking a little bit of a pay cut backseat to you know uh, open up a new position that's mm-hmm. not normal within yeah. side of organizations, which is a videography department um, mm-hmm. or content creation. I department. don't even see the vision, dude. Like I um, know, like oh, dude, that's that's something I really want to pursue. But I would never going back to then to now be like expected to be where it is right now oh no like even this right now yeah. doing this podcast yeah. and, and this video like I, I wouldn't have pictured this yeah right like if somebody would have let us take a peek two years into the future of what our content would be and where we would be at in that whole realm of things videography stuff and podcast and instagram yeah i i, w- I probably wouldn't have believed it right you know i would i i didn't i didn't expect what we're receiving now but again guys we attended this event it'll be two years in january yeah on january 20th or 21st it'll Mm -hmm. be the two-year mark so here in like two weeks and so that's why i kind of thought it would be a cool episode to talk about you know right before the two-year mark um uh, of of hiring a videographer and let's be real the first year was kind of a shit show. We nobody knew what the fuck we were doing, you know. Uh, we were hiring people out of college, <laughs> you know, and we didn't know what we were doing. So right. we have to grow together, right? Right, and kind of figure this thing out. You know, Austin's done a an amazing job. I get messages, dude. Whoever's your videographer's killing it, oh, you yeah. know. And so yeah, for sure, it kind of it, it doesn't. Again, it just doesn't happen overnight. The first year was a shit show. We got an Instagram account shut down for whatever reason. Instagram won't tell you why they shut an account down. Right. But in the first year, we we built it up to like 9,000 or 9,800 or something like that followers before it got deactivated. Um, but dude, honestly, that's like I would attribute almost all of our success to that exact same thing. And honestly, I mean, all the success I've had in sales and business and everything to this point is like, I don't. I don't know shit, man. I just, yeah. when I'm like, oh, that could benefit me, like, but I don't know what I'm doing, I just do it. Like, well, if you see other people benefiting I'll figure it from, out as I go. Exactly. If, <laughs> you know? I, if you know for a fact people are benefiting from creating content, yeah. you don't have to know how to do it to start yeah. because you'll figure it out because you'll mm-hmm. fall on your face. And every time you fall on your face, it hurts a little bit. One of my biggest obstacles um, when we decided, okay, let's do it, let's hire yeah. a big let's do our podcast, yeah. was continuing to come up with the content because we we don't think it's unlimited right like we're we're like dude i only know so much about this in this area and like what am i going to do when i run out of my content yeah you know or what what, the things that i feel like i'm an expert in but it's pretty crazy man like we continue to come up with things one because we continue to evolve yeah i mean this has helped push us to new levels to evolve new information yeah and like i think that there's that fear for a lot of people that are like dude i want to start a podcast i want to start you know putting stuff out that will help people like they probably do think like, I don't know that much other than this. And it's like, it's crazy, man. Like they're overthinking it. They are. We continue to come up with great topics and that helps some, someone might listen to this episode and be like, "Eh, that's, that's not for me, but they'll listen to another episode and be like, Oh dude, I got a ton of value out of that episode. Exactly. And so it's not going to be for everybody. Depends on where they're at in the journey. Yeah. But every single episode you put out is going to help somebody if if you do have those good intentions and you're continuing to evolve yeah. and you really are sharing the things that are going to help you help you level up but honestly man like that was my only that was my only reservation when we started I was like man what are we going to talk on after like 10 episodes i don't even know right like well originally <clears throat> we were like doing tax tip tuesdays we own an accounting firm you know and oh, so yeah, we were like, doing it all wrong but we had know, to go through that to learn you know uh but we were trying to figure out what to talk about what right. to what you, what do people want to hear about mm-hmm. And, you know, um, it just got to the point where it was just like, you know, we know a lot about business just in general, just some of the struggles and the headaches and, you know, all of that. And so and and I think I think social media does a terrible job of highlighting more so the end result than they do the process. Mm -hmm. And so the problem with that is a lot of startups or young entrepreneurs are trying to emulate the people that they look up to with where they're at right now right. and not emulating the process that they went through to get where they're at. Yeah. And so I think we do a little bit better of a job of highlighting more so the struggles, highlighting some timelines. I always talk about three to five years before you'll see the real value of what your business can do um, because it, it does take time for word of mouth. I mean, even with easier accounting, it was really slow the first like year or two getting customers and clients and it's just like 
well, maybe maybe it's not for us. Now it's just that you haven't been around long enough, yeah. and, and and your name hasn't circulated the circles, you know, for three years, four years, five years, yeah. and then at, at that time you'll start seeing the real value. Um, that, that the business can generate revenue wise, as long as you're putting in the time and effort. So I think we do a great job of highlighting the process, why others highlight the end result, yeah. because they've already been through the process. Yeah, if you ask any business owner, entrepreneur that's at the level you want to be, like, what was the biggest secret for you? Never giving up. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like let's be it's real. Gonna, man. You're gonna go through you know? some shit. Just don't yeah. quit, right? Yeah. And and they'll all say that, but mm-hmm. then they drive off and you know whatever they're. Ferrari, <laughs> you know, and so you're like, damn, I don't have a Ferrari in three years or two years or whatever. And 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 again, you get caught in the comparison thing, and, and you've got to be very careful about what you compare yourself to. But um, that's one thing I was going to talk about. Um, uh, that yeah, I, wrote I didn't down. even know you had that written down. I just no, just in terms of like how much an individual, when they create content, will evolve personally. Totally. Yeah. Like they, you, if you, you, you are, will. if that's the thing holding you up from starting your journey into putting your content out um like man just get started with what you do know yeah and, and make sure that you are putting effort into you continuing continuing to grow like man like one of my goals this year is a book a month like yeah. i was never a reader before yeah, two exactly. years ago but being around the people that were a part of in our groups um our entrepreneur groups have really pushed me to start reading i can't believe the stuff that i've learned the impact it's made in our business and it, the ability to be able to put more content out to give value and things like this, our podcast. So you do got to put in some work, but it's stuff you should be doing anyway. Like it there's pretty cool stuff to learn to, in books. Yeah. Imagine that, you yeah, know? Yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it literally, I mean, you will evolve mm-hmm. as an individual and as you evolve, the content evolves, right? Especially if you apply it. Like there's yeah. a lot of things in the books I read. And I'm like, wow, that's really cool. I never thought about that. And I don't apply it. Yeah. And then there's things I read and I'm like, dude, I got to start doing that. And then it works. Right. Like, so you got to apply and, things and, and, to your some life things, too. And some things I think that, like we've dug up maybe past memories or past experiences or past oh, yeah. lessons totally. that have were buried so deep that we, you know, haven't really consciously thought about it in in a long, long time. And creating content, you you start putting some of those old scenarios, putting that puzzle together, and realizing the lessons that that you learned yeah. with inside of some of those old scenarios, and so. In, in creating content, a lot of the a lot of the quotes and stuff, like when I send him a quote, a, a lot of those are just shit that we're dealing with. Like mm-hmm. to, if we're talking about struggle, like not all of our businesses are 10, 15, 20 years yeah. old. Each business go. has the same process of struggles, yeah. you know, and has its ups and downs and its lefts and rights. And you lose key players or employees and you've got this issue or that issue or this dries up, this marketing source no longer works. Mm-hmm. You know, there's constant issues, yeah. you know, and so no matter what level you're at in business, um, and that's what I used to think is, you know, if we got to X level, you know, I, I'd be happy and um, it, life would be so much easier. Um, in reality, happiness obviously can't, it, it, it's not waiting somewhere at a money destination. Yeah. Like, you know, or inside of a vehicle or inside of a boat or whatever. It's just not sitting there to when you buy it, then you also receive a voucher of happiness. Like it doesn't work like that. Yeah. And so as as we create content, we do this, we're talking about shit that we deal with and, and realizations that we have. Yeah. Like, holy shit, I guess the, the real true definition of happiness is just always pushing yourself and you know, and, and, and being disciplined. And when you know that you're actually really trying to push yourself and, uh, evolve as an individual, you'll, you'll be happier. Yeah. You, the, the, when you're, when you're the, the least happy is when you're doing the least, mm-hmm. right. That when you're sitting on the couch eating potato chips and you know that you're being lazy, but you don't fully admit it to yourself and you end up in a dark place. Yeah. But when you're actually pushing yourself, pushing your limits, you end up being a little bit happier. And, to be honest, this podcast is one of my happy places now. Me too. <laughs> you know, I enjoy, so I enjoy doing it. Yeah, I, I enjoy the feedback we get. Yeah, um, even it's, the critiquing that we get. Like, and dude, honestly, the other areas that it's opened up too is like, 
like what I do for the company where I go out and, and work with B2B people and try yeah. and get them to become affiliates of ours and stuff. A lot of those people over the years, they don't listen to podcasts or anything either. But when they do go on and check out our following and then they listen to our podcast and then they do see like, Helps oh, us. these guys are dedicated. These guys do give good information. These mm-hmm. guys, then they naturally want to bring their business to us too. Yeah. So it's almost like it helps my resume, Yeah, you know, putting this podcast out and putting... I'm, I'm not expecting yeah. that, but yeah. dude, that's happened. We've already had a couple yeah. of lead sources that know who we are because yeah. of our account and our, our yeah. podcast. And so it's, dude. it adds validity, right? It, it helps uh, validate who yeah. you are. Like, so you don't have to say who you are as much mm-hmm. when there's 65,000 other people that are listening to you yeah. or following you. Yeah. So they give you validity, totally. right? In, into it. That's your resume to a certain extent. And eventually you guys will get there. Um, I think it helps build loyalty too, man. Cause exactly. some of the groups that already were working with us yeah. as affiliates now have their sales guys listening to our podcast and things like that. And too, everybody's dude. And buying like, and they in. enjoy it. Yeah. You know, they're like, dude, that, that helps value. them in their yeah. company, their position at their company. And, and so, I'm happy about that Me too. We, we, oh, I love in, it. In, in, in most of those cases, we already had their business. Yeah. And so we didn't have to have a podcast. Yeah, they to have they just business. heard about it. Like, dude, I want but, to listen to Kelly and Trevor's podcast. And, but dude, we're helping them yeah. and they help us. It's, it's a win-win situation in, in, in that regard. But so some other things to expect when you guys create content, um, one, it's like we talked about, it'll be very, very uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Very much so. I yeah. mean, everybody ducked the, the camera at yeah. first when, when, when we first brought a, a person in walking around with a camera. And, <laughs> and we still have people that really don't like it and shy away from it. Yeah. Um, which, again. We respect that. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. But a lot you know? of people have just gotten used to it. Yeah. They don't worry about it or we don't worry about Instead it. Instead of or... a camera, now it's just, it's Austin. So now that they're comfortable with Austin, mm-hmm. by default, they get a little more comfortable with the camera because they know Austin. He's just doing most, his job. He's just doing his thing. You know <laughs> what I mean? And so, but you will be uncomfortable personally. You'll get hate. Yeah. Um, especially in the very beginning stages, I promise you that. So you do have to be thick skinned far more than what I even thought uh, you would need. Um, Some of the other guys in our groups that do podcasts, they're like, dude if you guys aren't getting more hate, then you're doing something wrong. Right. And I'm like, I don't know if I a hundred percent agree with that, but like, dude, it's always going to be there and just use that as a, as a meter to show you that you are doing yeah. something right. Yeah. I mean, you, you, hate, you, it you just, know? it's a matter of perspective, Yeah, right? You can be like, holy, sh-, you know, and, and it depends on where, where your focus is, mm-hmm. you know, like if I focused on, you know, five people that are being haters versus the, you know, hundreds of comments or DMs or whatever it is of people getting real value that are flat out saying that it changed their life or, you know, for the better anyways. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to try to claim that we're gods and change people's lives or anything like that. But I I think that we have sparked some things in some people that that have helped maybe push them down a new direction or new path in their life. Mm -hmm. And you, I mean, you, we can never take full credit for that because it's their actions. They have to follow through. Right. Um, and so we're happy to be the spark, I guess. Um, but, but they're the ones that have to stay on fire, you know, if they want to see it through, but you guys, six months in, you'll doubt, (laughs) is this going to be worth it? Um, you know, some people want to know, uh, financially, what are the benefits of it? Um, I, I, I couldn't really tell you right now um, what the benefits are totally financially because, again, we haven't pushed a whole lot of stuff on people. It's not really know? trackable. Like, you know what I mean? It's not like, well, Google's trackable. You know, Facebook's trackable. <laughs> All these things are trackable, you know, in terms of creating yeah, a campaign. Clicks and click leads through and, and then this. And that. Yeah, exactly. This isn't like that. This isn't yeah. a marketing channel like that. It's just like, I mean... Again, you've got to be. We don't know. The there might haul. be benefits, like I talked about with our affiliate sources, that we can't really track. Yeah. You know, there's benefits of. Yeah. There's personal people that benefits. might buy products from us five years from now because of our, our there's podcast. There's personal that benefits we that we right get yeah. uh, in terms of our personal growth. When you're tr- trying to help other people grow, you grow. Yeah. Exactly. You know, by default, and so I agree with that. It's very difficult to to sit there and say how quickly you'll anybody will see results from it. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're doing it for an immediate result, then then don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> because it's just it's not going to happen. I mean, we're coming upon, I think, a year. I think it was like March or maybe it was May. Was it May? So on January eighth, it'll actually be yeah, it was May sixth. I think it was the the first day that I posted something on on real business owners. And so we're coming upon a year mark. Um 
And the reality is, is we, 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 we're in it for the long haul, as Kel talked about. Like, we want to do this for years and years and years and mm-hmm. just see where it takes us. Yeah. And we're okay spending the money and, 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 you know, luckily we're financially able to do that. Maybe some of you guys listening can't hire a videographer or spend, you know, two or three grand a month on ads getting a following. But if you don't have the ability to hire a videographer, you have an iPhone. Yeah. You know, turn the camera on yourself. If you don't you have somebody to edit a podcast, you can download the Anchor app or, you know, any of you just Google it. Yeah. You, and know, you, don't, apps need, you that, don't need to edit it. And you can let it be raw. You can let yeah. it be you. You know, if you can download Ellipsin or Anchor and you can record right from your phone and, and put your content out there in the world to help people, you don't have to have a big old budget for you it. You don't have to. But, I mean, I, I would suggest maybe putting a small budget towards... Um, growing your following, totally. whether yeah. it's five hundred bucks a month or something like that, if yeah. that's what your business can afford, then yeah. then 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 spend that. If it's two fifty a month, just spend that. Yeah. Right? Do what you can. I think the whole point is do what you can, but don't not do it just because it's uncomfortable. You know, like it's uncomfortable for everybody when they're starting something new, um, and it's not even just in your content creation for your company. It's everything, whether it's you know just getting out and networking more, or getting on stages and speaking, or putting your videos out there online, or doing your podcast, whatever. Whatever it is, like this, this episode isn't just for building a con- like content for your company. I mean, we've been getting some questions about it, and that's why we're doing this episode. Yeah, yeah. But this is for it's the same thing for everything, man. Like, be willing to get uncomfortable. Don't not do things just because it's scary or it's too expensive. Do what you can, and you, I think you'll see benefits. Yeah, and 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 like I talked about earlier, about three to five years. Yeah. I'm more interested to see what that number is. Me too. In three to five, the three to five year mark, because I oh, yeah. we constantly say, "Hey, be willing to put in three to five years or eat shit to see what with your business, no results. what with, with what your business can really, really produce in that time frame." Yeah. So I'm not really trying to judge the content or evaluate content or what it's bringing us in return until a three to five year mark. Totally. Right. Um, one last thing that that I think. Um, is pretty cool about creating content is that it lives forever. Mm-hmm. It's evergreen. Right? It's evergreen. It lives forever. Yeah. It's it's you put it out there and it's somebody might find that piece of content that you put out ten years ago and reach out to you and do business with you. And uh, when you put it out once, it just lives mm-hmm. forever. Yeah. And how cool is that? That your great grandkids that you may never ever meet get to see grandpa, great grandpa Kel you know, on his podcast and be able to get valuable information from their great, great, great grandpa. Yeah. This you know, it's, it's like a it's like a real life journal. Like you're living it, yeah. not writing it down. Old days they wrote books and shit, right? Like, but how cool would it be to peek and in? People are still reading those books, man. People are still I reading. I literally the books. just bought Think and Grow Rich again because I can't find my old copy. I probably gave it to somebody. I haven't read it since I was twenty. I just bought it again because I want to freaking, I want to go through that book again, dude. You know what I mean? I always learn. If I read a book a second time or third time, like I'm going to learn new things in it every, every single, single time. time. So like, dude, Napoleon Hill, he's not even alive, right? Like, <laughs> No, I don't think so. I can't remember when he and wrote that book. And I could book, be but... completely wrong. But again, guys, we are not the most educated people on earth. Yeah. We're actually. But I'm still buying his books, man. Yeah. And that's uh, what a lot of people have, dude, is goals of building a legacy. Yeah. You want to build a legacy? Put your information out there. Put your content yeah. out there. Write yeah. your books. Build your podcast. You know, do your thing, man. Like, take action towards that if that's really your goal is to build a legacy. And this is one good way you can do it is by putting your content out there on podcasts. It's not going to go anywhere anytime yeah. soon. Yeah. You know, so... I think people should. It it, do it. it, it attracts customers. Um, it, it really does mm-hmm. eventually, right? Yeah. Because people will like you, and they people want to do business with people that they like. Yeah. Like, let's be real. You know, business is shitty sixty or seventy percent of the time because you're dealing with problems, 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 and then you get your payday, and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, I can deal with some problems. Yeah. You know, or whatever. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then, <laughs> but. Uh, no, it, it 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 does attract customers. We've got customers from the content that we've created, and and that they're some of our better customers. So if if somebody actually uh, comes to work with you or becomes a customer of yours because of the content you created, you'll actually probably create a great relationship with that individual and have them be one of your better customers, and probably the least headache yeah. of of a, of a customer because yeah. they like who you are, they respect who you are, and 
you know, they don't want to give you a, be a problem child, right? Because totally. they're an entrepreneur or a business owner. Yeah. Ours are anyways, because we do accounting. Yeah. And so they understand that the headaches of, of, of customers and the, the complainers and nobody wants to be that person. Right. Totally. And so, uh, but yeah, I, I actually thought the online journal, the video, I thought that was, that was just kind of a cool concept because yeah. I would love to peek and, you know, my great grandfather, if I Dude. could Google it and, and look up videos of some of the stuff that they used to do, you know, whether it's how to put a fence post in properly yeah. and how to settle your ground or, you know, or whatever, how to find good shelter, you know, 200, 300, 400, years, whatever it is. Yeah. But I, I honestly think that that's going to be a really cool thing in 50 years or 70 years or 80 years to have that type of content live on forever. Totally. Um, and, and, and leave that legacy to your kids or your great grandkids. And so there's so many benefits from it. There is. You know, you can attract customers, you grow personally. Um, it's an online journal um, for, you know, future children leaving a legacy um just again talk about the shit that you're dealing with at the moment yeah fuck this pipe broke here on this lawn and here's what i do when the pipe breaks i've got to shut this off and i then i gotta dig this and do this and this is the best way to go about it or whatever it is mm -hmm. so don't overthink it because well, you are doing stuff you're moving you're in motion all day every day yeah if the guy that's a plumber just does little teeny, you know, hey, here's how you fix this, yeah. you know, inside of your home. When that big pipe breaks and they can't do it themselves, they're going to call that plumber that helped with that little teeny shower head thing on how to take a rusty shower head off or use this thing to loosen it up or whatever it is, yeah. right? Like yeah. it could be something so big and it could be something so small. Well, it's just it doesn't matter to my son and his friends at the gym yeah. over this holiday break because they're in college and they hate it, right? Mm. And <clears throat> they're, they're like already looking at summer sales jobs and not going back to college next year and all these things. And, but they're asking me for all my advice. You yeah, know? Yeah. I said, you know, I'm not going to tell you that you need to stay in yeah, college. I'm yeah. not going to tell you that you need to go start your sales career. I'm not, it's up to you, man. Yeah. Like everybody's journey is different. I'm like, but I will tell you one thing is while you're there, make sure you're learning. Yeah. You're like, well, I hate history. I'm like, dude, you shouldn't that you're choosing to hate history. Yeah. And they're like, well, I'm just not good at it. So like, I just don't think I'm good at history. I'm like, well, then you're taking that on as your identity, right? Like yeah. just because you failed a test doesn't mean you're a bad tester and all these things. While you're there, you should be putting the effort into gaining your knowledge. And that's for everybody, man. Even listen to this podcast. If you're not ready to put a podcast out right now, cool. Or you're not ready to start writing articles or blogs, cool. But you should be paying attention and to what am I learning every single day? Because I told them, I was like, you could be in history and learn a really cool like historical story about whatever, maybe one of our old presidents. Yeah. And then you can turn that into something that's applicable to business, that old story, and write an article on it. Now people get something out of that. And then they search you up online and see that, oh, this guy is actually really smart and he's got cool content they like to follow. And those are the people who will become your customers one day. So even if you're not ready to well, go out and, and start some putting content out there yeah, or whatever, yeah. like make sure you are learning. Yeah. And so I told my son and his stepbrother and another kid that was on their baseball team, they're all talking in the gym. We had a great talk. I wish I would have recorded it, honestly, because yeah. they had good questions. But I was like, you guys, it's I don't care if you're in college or not, but you need to be learning. So, you know, make sure you're, you're grateful for where you're at right now. The like you might not history love history. books are full of a bunch of people that – overcame something yeah so if they're going to go into sales they could probably listen to these history books of people overcoming big big problems mm -hmm. that made history and when they're knocking doors or whatever they go do a sales job and the it's just not going their way they could they could reframe their mind maybe back to some of those lessons. There's yeah. always lessons inside. I wish I well, would have. Knowledge is wish, power, dude. It I, really I, is. I wish I would have. I wish that's why I told him. I was like, I, I, I didn't I go the school route, yeah, but I wish either. I would have. Yeah. I, you don't need school to be successful, but I wish I would have been a better studier. Yeah. Uh, I wish I would have paid more attention sooner to learning yeah. so that I had more knowledge to put out there um, because I'd be a lot further now than I am if I, I would yeah, have. I val so, value information far more now totally, than what I used dude. to do. I mean, even just in the last two years, it's yeah. crazy. And so that's the advice I'm giving these kids. Um, and, and hopefully they take and run with it. They really seemed like open yeah. to it. And, uh, but dude, that's, I mean, college isn't for everybody, but there's a lot of power. In if you're in college right now and you don't want to be there, you should still be focused on learning so that you have more knowledge when you're in real life. Right. Let's, so. let's drop, <laughs> let's drop this nugget real quick that I just barely thought of just right off the top of my head. Um, 
if you are going to create content, you probably should have a podcast because it actually helps create content. Yeah, totally. Right? So you just film yourself, you know, recording or whatever it is, and then you chop those videos up and then you could post little snippets of your podcast rather than trying to film a bunch of content just for Instagram plus come over here and do the majority I think of uh of our Instagram is mostly podcast clips at this point yeah. you know minus a few conversations of some people that have came in yeah. to talk to us but uh, that that's a good way to kind of double dip yeah is if you have a podcast and you're just kind of spewing information that you already know mm-hmm. um and then you have guests on and things like that, and they spew information that they already know, then chop that up and post some of that information, then it could lead people over to your podcast or whatever, but it also helps just create content for Instagram or Facebook or yeah. wherever you're choosing to post. So All of them. Yep, yep. Um, so I hope you guys got uh, some value out of that. That was kind of a little bit longer than what we were talking about. What, how, what are we, 40 minutes, 50 minutes? 45 minutes. 45 minutes, that's not too bad. Guys, if you got value out of the podcast, make sure that uh, you share it with uh, somebody else that you believe could get value out of the podcast because you should be hanging out with like-minded people, right? Um, So any of your friends or family members that you surround yourself with, they should be able to get value from our podcast. And if they can't, you're probably not hanging out in the right crowds, you know? Um, (laughs) It's true, though. Yeah, no, drop a rate, drop a review, man. Yeah. Let's uh, help us yeah. make you know RBO one of the top podcasts out there, man. We're on a mission to, to help as many people as we can. So. Oh, I like this one. So here's a here's a review for for uh, excuse me from Ali Lifts, incredible podcast for business, five star review. This was just on Thursday. This podcast is a mental orgasm for the entrepreneurial <laughs> mind. Yeah. I found it only two days ago and have been binging nonstop. Great insight and motivation, and their Instagram account is legit. These guys care about their audience, and it shows. I'll be soaking up everything. Keep it up, good dudes. Right on, dude. I'll That's kind of cool. Yeah. I like that. Mental hey, orgasm. Mental orgasm. Cool. <laughs> That's cool. I, I like it. that. Appreciate you guys for uh, you know tuning in and listening and supporting us. It, it really does mean a lot to us. And let's kick ass this year. 